Architecture is based upon the misconception that strong is stable, unchanging in time. But that liability for structure was well known to the Romans also. Guta cavat lapidem non vised sape cadendo. Water cuts stone with its continuous drops. Or, for a short time, stone can resist the wind, but slowly it starts to move and bows to the pressures of time. The same goes for energy. No matter how sturdy or well insulated your house is, hot summers heat your structure up and cold winters cool it down. More insulation can slow the process but cannot assure real stability, only increase the strength and resistance. That's because the problem is with the model, not with the structure. In terms of energy, our houses can be seen to work just like the moon. We have some mass and some insulation atmosphere around it. The side exposed to the sun heats up, the other is cold. If we want to maintain a stable temperature everywhere, we have to heat the cold side and cool the heated side. Real stability, however, comes with responsibility. If we were able to build houses with the capacity to react to any change in terms of both structure and energy, stability and energy efficiency can be assured. In this case, any effect, structural or local thermal load, would create an immediate affect, a response of the structure. Energy and weight could be counteracted and, on a total scale, change would not occur. This is practically real or temporal stability, an unchanging state which classical strong structures are incapable of by their nature. To return to our planetary model, a house like that would work more like planet Earth. In addition to mass and insulation, Distribution would also be added to the structure. To show how this can be done, let's take a typical house of any shape. Let's add mass and insulation, conventional for any house today. Now let's add one more layer, a water surface to the structure. If we then connect all water surfaces, we achieve the earth model capacity of distribution within our building. This not only assures better microclimate, but various energy saving options like storing solar heat during the summer to use in winter. The questions remain, however, how does this system work and in what ways is it superior to other types of building? Classic structures can be built of heavy materials like brick or concrete. Unlike light structures, they're more expensive to build but have good heat storage capacity. This property is crucial for good indoor climate and comfort. Thermal mass helps to protect the house from overheating in summer, when solar load is stored in walls and radiating it back towards the outside when the temperature drops. It also helps to save energy and maintain stable thermal comfort inside, when heating energy is stored and returned, allowing the heating system to operate with break times. But, in the end, thermal mass can only slow the process, not eliminate it. No matter how thick our walls are, when heat remains for several days, the whole structure will be overheated, keeping indoors unprotected. Indoor thermal mass also can only win for us some time, but in the end the stored heat leaves towards the cold side. Precisely because of this slowness, when heat is concentrated, a room will heat up, even in a heavy structure. The air inside takes the heat before it can enter the structure itself. In contrast, water is a superb distributor. It collects and moves heat rapidly, meaning that 100% of the water layer can be utilized. Because of this, an all-water panel, even using just a thin water layer, is equal to a thick brick or concrete wall when it comes to heat mass. Additionally, water enters the structure only at the end of construction. This makes all water panels easy to build. Light during construction, heavy while in operation. That makes all water panel the first structure which combines the advantages of both heavy and light construction at the same time. Water is also excellent material for heat storage. Two cups of water stores about the same heat as a one and a half liter bottle of brick or concrete. And just three bottles of water can store the same amount of heat as a room full of air. 
Now, consider that the water volumes throughout the entire structure are connected. So, for any local heat gain or loss, the total water volume is reacting. Therefore, the thermal mass is significantly higher than any other structure. You can have a comfortable, ideal microclimate, where air and surface temperatures are perfectly maintained in an easy and effective way. All water panel also saves you energy. Classic heaters, coolers are highly concentrated. You need high performance, very cold air for cooling or hot water for heating, to have effect on total space. But all water is all around you. You can utilize much lower performance to achieve not only the same effect, but to go far further. Not only ideal temperatures for air, but also for surfaces. In practical terms, this means that for heating, if compared with a conventional house with gas heating, where energy is 100% and saving is 0%, or a gas plus geothermal heating system, which saves about 20%, energy costs drop to 80%, all water panel, in combination with either geothermal or solar energy, can supply the complete energy needs of a building. Available in both opaque and transparent forms, all water panel is the first transparent structure with significant heat mass. No cooling down in winter or heating up in summer. Energy saving without compromising microclimate. All water panel not only collects heat, it also transports it effectively. Therefore, its fire resistance is much higher than conventional structures. This goes for transparent panels as well, assuring transparent structures with real significant fire resistance. All water panel is a real multifunctional element introduced to building practice. Unlike classic architecture, where for any purpose we just add a new element, we make walls, insulation, mechanical installation, finish, technical control, solar panels, etc. All water panel gives you all.